better run, man. Life's a pain, but you got me. Yeah, life's a pain, but I got you. Hey, what's up, parasites and travelers of the night? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And today we're going to talk about two really cool characters. One that I love a lot, obviously, because I've made almost 800 episodes of them, which is Venom. And then Moon Knight, who is someone I've talked about uh, in the last year or so and gotten into heavily in the last year or so, uh, thanks to one of my alters, Blue, who is a huge, huge fan of that character because of the TV show, which I also love too. Uh, probably a little bit more than the comic book versions, but I'm still going through the history of the comic, so I'm sure in time that coin could flip. But I thought Oscar Isaac killed it in that show, so I'm really excited to talk about Moon Knight number 23 by Jed McKay and Alessandro Cappuccio who is the artist on this, uh, and Jed McKay, who's the writer, who's been doing an amazing job. I actually already reviewed The Midnight Mission, which was the first trade paperback of this run, and I'll put a link to that episode down below if you want it as a precursor before you watch the rest of this episode. You can check that episode out right now. I'll put the link down there uh, in the description box if you want to check it out. So uh, what we've established in that episode, though, was that Moon Knight has a new status quo. He no longer really has Conchu around. He's not really tethered to Conchu. But there is another fist of vengeance out there, another uh, Conch, you know, another Conchu chosen one, because obviously Moon Knight is the fist of uh, vengeance or the fist of Conchu, but Conchu has two fists. <laughs> so there's another a character out there who's running around and uh, and you know fighting crime, but also doesn't like Moon Knight, doesn't like the, you know that he kind of turned away from Conchu and someone who's a little bit more loyal to Conchu. So that's kind of the status quo. And meanwhile, Moon Knight himself, as Mister Knight and as Moon Knight are protecting one section of New York and kind of calling it their domain and they're just watching over it. And any traveler of the night who is passing through there at nighttime, he is available to protect them. Um, so it's really cool. I really love what McKay's doing on this run. And uh, and so I can't wait to talk about this one where we get these two characters interacting. Now it's not Eddie interacting with Moon Knight. And that's really interesting too, because I don't think Eddie Brock and Mark Spector, Moon Knight, Stephen Grant, I don't think any of them actually been in a comic book together where they've met and talked and had an actual interaction. I think Moon Knight met Venom when Matt Gargan was bonded to the symbiote during Civil War, um, when you know we had Matt Gargan being Venom for a while, and then he went into the Thunderbolts and then into the Dark Avengers. So during that time, Moon Knight has met Venom, but not while the suit was bonded to Eddie. And then now even, he's meeting Dylan, Eddie's son, and not Eddie. So, um, but he does talk a little bit about Eddie in this. And he says, yeah, I know of him. I kind of know his story a little bit, um, but we've never really crossed paths. But if you're his son, you know, I've heard some, because obviously over the past few years, Eddie's done a lot more heroic things, you know, as anti-Venom for a while there and then saving New York City that way. But then also with King and Black and everything and joining kind of the Avengers and helping everyone. So Eddie's made a, a little bit, the word's getting around that Eddie's kind of a hero. So Moon Knight kind of is like, yeah, I get it. Like, I, I'm here to, I appreciate that. And if you're his son and you're the new Venom, you know, and you're a traveler of the night and you're cutting through this part of town and people are trying to kill you, then absolutely, I'm here to protect you. So I really like this. The artwork's fantastic. These goons, uh, you know, super-powered goons are after uh, Dylan because they were hired by Alchemex and Life Foundation and everything because he slipped away from their grasp recently. So I do like this. This actually fits into the continuity. Jed McKay's like, hey, what's going on? Where's Dylan at in the story? Great, I can tell this little side story with him real quick, uh, you know, real quick called Panic Room. And we're gonna, you know, introduce him to Moon Knight again because they already met during the Miss Marvel crossover. They had a little interaction there. And so that's why Dylan comes to him. He's like, hey, we met recently and I'm in this part of town. I found myself over here. I heard you're the protector of this uh, part of town. And I, I'm up against a threat that I may not be able to handle on my own because I'm a kid. And even though I'm bonded to the symbiote that was bonded to my dad and is pretty ruthless, I think we're still a little outnumbered considering the power set. Some of these characters have vibrational powers and sound powers and fire powers. So Moon Knight's like, okay, I get it. The odds are against you. So let's team up and let's take these guys down. And, uh, and you know, and Moon Knight's in the middle of trying to track down a major threat, a major villain. What I like that McKay does in his run is every issue for the last like maybe 10 issues or so has been standalone, but also still building. So it feels like an episode of a TV show that has a long growing arc, but still self-contained. And so this is also just a one-off issue where these two are meeting and teaming up. So of course they team up, they fight against the bad guys and boy, oh boy, are there some killer splash pages in this book. Just holy cow. And before we get any further in the book, we are going to get into some spoilers, but I want to give, boom, that away right there. That is a digital code. First person to put that code in gets a digital copy of Moon Knight 23, and you can read it for yourself and let me know what you think and your review is 
in the comments down below. So there, I just surprised it on you while showing off this beautiful, gorgeous cover. So yeah, go to that website, put that code in, first person to do it gets the comic book. Everyone else, you're going to miss your chance because it only works one time, but go buy this book. It's If you're a Venom fan, it's awesome. If you were interested in getting into Moon Knight, it's also a really cool standalone issue to introduce you to Moon Knight and what his new status quo is in the comic books. So yeah, beautiful, beautiful splash page. I would love to own the original art for either this page or um, there's another splash page, which is this one right here, where they're surrounded by all the bodies of the goons that they beat up. But just amazing. This The artist team, there's been like three rotating artists on Moon Knight since Jed McKay has taken over. And they're all amazing. They all have very similar styles, but stand out as well. So you know, it's like, oh, okay, I know who this artist is. He drew this issue, this issue, and this issue. Uh, okay, but, you know, it still feels like a similar tone. The color palettes, uh, kind of, you know, the inking, a lot of it looks similar. Like the, the storytelling, the, you know, the panel layouts. So they're doing a really good job of even though changing artists, but making it look, you know, close enough and similar enough to where the tone is set and you're not jarred anytime an artist switches. Uh, at least that's how I feel. I feel it's a very organic, forward moving story and it's very engaging and it's going to lead us to the first ever event book starring Moon Knight. Uh, there's never really been a big crossover in comics that starred Moon Knight. There was the sidekick's revenge story in Amazing Spider-Man but that was only in the pages of Amazing Spider-Man, and that was a story that was bleeding over from the Moon Knight book, but it never crossed over with other titles. So we're actually going to get an event book coming up starring Moon Knight. So I'm very excited. <laughs> as, as someone who's been reading every issue and buying them all and reading them, I love where the story's going. I think it's going to be the return of Conchu. It's going to be a big deal, and I cannot wait. So speculation aside, though, here's the book. They take down the villains, and then that's when, you know, he's like, why, why couldn't you defeat these guys on your own venom why couldn't you just beat these guys and you should be strong enough and he's like yeah but i'm i'm a little bit off ever since i ran away from life foundation and i missed my chance at getting my dad during the dark web event and then i ran into you and wolverine and miss marvel he's like i've been off lately because there's this vibration or something coming from the city so depending on where i am in the city i feel like i'm getting weaker from this sound you know that's resonating it's you know it's kind of like very low key but the symbiote can sense it and it's kind of weakening us. And Moon Knight's like, hey, wait, that could be the guy I'm after because he's using a sound device to power something up that he needs. And that's when they realize, okay, well, we took down the goons. Let's, you know, your goons that were after you, Venom, help me take down my guy. And so I don't want to spoil what happens because it's kind of neat and it's going to lead into, you know, future Moon Knight stories. But it did kind of catch me off guard. Uh, the, the villain is definitely a slight step ahead of Moon Knight and and but that's cool you know Moon Knight's not the the smartest tool in the shed and without him having the connection to Conchu he has he has a little bit of weakness here where he's not his at his fullest potential to some degree either um, as Moon Knight um, but he's still very clever and he's still figuring some stuff out but he does get a little outsmarted this time but I won't say how because I thought it was pretty cool and I didn't see it coming so um so yeah but there's you know great Stuff here with Moon Knight, referencing even the Devil's Reign Moon Knight one shot. So Jed McKay knows what he's doing. He's been writing Moon Knight now for like two, three years. Um, he's He did that Devil's Reign issue that set up this series or that tied in this series. So he's doing a killer job. And I like the where he left Dylan and Moon Knight after this, where they kind of become friends. And he's like, you know what? I, if your dad's not around, you know, or if something happens and you, you need someone to help you uh, when you hit a wall, you know, come find me. You're a traveler of the night now and you're under my protection. So I was like, awesome. Yeah, very cool. I like this issue a lot. I thought it was really, really, really awesome. A lot of fun, like all Moon Knight issues have been, especially the last issue before this one, where they introduced a relationship with Mark Spector and another Marvel character that he has a connection to from way back in his, like, you know, a, a kind of West Coast Avengers days and stuff. Um, but they're starting to build a romance with him that he's a part of, but that Stephen Grant obviously isn't. Uh, so, very cool. It's it's really neat. Kind of, you know, they don't go full into the DID stuff as much as the show did, for example, because that was kind of the hook of the show to separate it from other Marvel shows and projects. Um, but they still do. It is a big part of the book. It's just not like in that same way. It's not that kind of focus on it, at least not right now. But they are building to something. And I'm very much looking forward to it because we haven't seen Jake Lockley around. And I'm I'm really excited <laughs> to see where this is all going right now. They're just kind of establishing Steven and Mark and kind of what they're doing and where their place is in the Marvel Universe without Khonshu. 
but we're getting there. I can feel it. So yeah, go pick up Moon Knight on the stands or buy it digitally if you buy comics digitally on Kindle or Comixology. And let me know what you think of the book. And if you got the digital code, also let me know what your review is down below. I definitely want to hear. Even if you don't review it, just let us know that you use the code and you got it. Let us know in the comments uh, so everyone can stop putting it in and trying to get the comic book. Um, so thank you so much. I appreciate you guys watching this episode. I appreciate you being patient with me on uploading episodes. We had a big week this last week with Symbiote Comic Books. Um, there's other stuff I got to get to, like Cult of Carnage Misery, which will be coming up in an episode soon. I have two issues of Carnage, uh, 11 and 12, that we got to talk about. So that's going to be a single episode. And then I also have Red Goblin number three, and that's going to be a single episode. And then, of course, we're going to get into the Carnage Reigns stuff after I cover all these. So I'll let a couple issues of Carnage Reign build, and then we'll do them like in sections where I'm talking about like two or three issues per episode um, because yeah there's not a ton I think it's only like an eight episode or eight issue crossover but still I, I'm going to break it up into like maybe three or four episodes so yeah we'll have a lot of that coming and then we got Spider-Man 2099 with Carnage in it now and a whole bunch of stuff the summer of Carnage has or summer of symbiotes has officially started and we're diving in with both feet for sure so thank you so much again let me know your comments down below and we'll keep talking down there thanks so much see you in the future peace